Hi, I'm Scott Hansen. I'm the latest artist to join the very talented team of artists here at the Diamond Head Gallery in Lahaina. I'm very privileged and honored to be here. I've been doing sculpture now for about the past 20 years. Uh, my home was originally in San Diego, California, and I've been in Hawaii for the past 40 years, about 25 on Oahu, about 15 over in Kona, Hawaii, which is probably where I'm going to be for the, uh, the rest of the game. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with my work, you might have seen me before and not recognize me. I'm this little frog-looking creature over here on the uh, other side of this beautiful humpback whale here. This is a shot that uh, a lot of you may know from the internet, etc. It went viral about five or six years ago. The shot was taken by Masaku Shioda, uh, one of the local photographers over there in Kona. Piece right here, the sculpture. This is Wind and Sea, probably my, what do we call it, my signature piece, along with the uh, small manta ray there, Close Encounters. Uh, wind and Sea is a combination of sea and sky. The bird itself is not really any sort of type of bird, it's actually just a generic seabird. It represents flight, it's not supposed to be anatomically correct. In fact, I think a hallmark of my work is that it's more of an artistic interpretation. It's not a literal, what would you call it, almost a taxidermist sort of presentation. Most of my work has a flow to it. It's very stylized. As you can see here, this piece is called Winter Song. Uh, it's obviously a whale tail, but it also incorporates symbol of infinity. And also just a very stylized look to it, which is like I said, very signature oriented to my work. Most of my sculptures you'll see uh, has a marine theme. Uh, this has been my first and foremost love throughout my life. I started diving sometime, well actually when I was too young to remember, I asked my parents once when uh, I had gotten my first mask and snorkel. They said they thought I was about five or six, but they said I was also borrowing equipment a couple of years before that. So this has been a constant throughout my entire life. And Will always be. And one of the questions I get a lot is, how are these pieces uh, cast, and et cetera, and how are the originals done? It really doesn't matter what the original is made from, and I've used everything from surfboard foam to clay, wax. It really doesn't matter what the original is from. What matters is that you get a first mold from it. This patina is done with a blowtorch in one hand and a spritzing bottle, very much like you spritz a plant with uh, containing chemicals. The chemicals will actually bind into the metal and become part of it. And then what uh, these highlights are done with is pneumatic tools that go back and we're hitting these with different grades of sandpaper until we get down to this very high, almost mirror finish polish. Another part of my work that most people have really enjoyed is the fact that they all come on these rotating bases. Uh, when I first did this, it was, it was considered almost uh, a breakthrough and, and the reality was that there was really no thought behind it. Most sculptors work on a potter's wheel, something that's rotating to begin with, so it seemed uh, unnatural almost that it wouldn't rotate in the galleries. In fact, I can remember calling galleries and saying, is there a reason that the pieces aren't on rotating bases? And um, every gallery I talked to thought it was a brilliant idea, so I brought it out and of course it's been duplicated quite a bit over the years and I'm happy to see it. I think, I think it's the best way to show the sculpture, and uh, glad I brought it on. And each piece is going to be very unique. It'll look like this, but it'll also be very, very individual. So another nice thing about my work is that if you don't like this particular color, say, well, you love the shape, you love the, the look of the piece, but this black is just not going to work in your office or home. You can also order this in, in several, of, in fact, in any of the patinas that uh, my foundry does. Another typical question I get from people uh, during gallery openings, etc., is where does my inspiration come from? And uh, basically, it's it's been my lifestyle. Uh, it's been a it's been a great mix of what I love to do for pleasure and also my vocation. So I've done uh, in the past, I would say, 15 years over. 50 trips to the Antarctic, uh, did a series of penguins after that, and a lot of uh, the inspiration I got, of course, was done from that continent. It's just uh, a marvelous place. Another thing uh, 
I'm also one of the only artists that is currently casting in stainless steel. The reasons are many, but the, the biggest two are heat and also difficulty of the material itself to work with. Uh, people that work in stainless steel say that when they go to bronze, it's more like cutting uh, through butter than what they're used to. Stainless steel takes about six to 800 degrees more heat to cast than, say, a typical sculpture in bronze. This is the same piece, Wind and Sea. This particular piece was cast originally in bronze. It sold out in bronze, and we brought it out in stainless steel uh, simply because it was so popular. I think it was gone within two years, and there was almost 500 pieces in this particular piece. This is uh, Wind and Sea again, also called Makani Kai in Hawaii. excited about joining the Diamond Head Gallery here in Lahaina. We're on Front Street. Uh, if you'd like to see my work, please drop by and visit this gorgeous gallery. Aloha.